the Tier 5 channel members and patrons. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Sergeant Puma, Cat Crab Lobster, and Duck Machine. Thank you very much for the support. It is much appreciated. Story number one. Heirs of Humanity, written by Clock Tower Echoes. The great unmaker had come for humanity. From beyond the stars, it shattered the heavens and swept across the globe like a specter of death. It was not an invasion or a war that destroyed nations and sided cities, but an alien plague unlike any before it. Millions died on the first day, and hundreds of thousands soon followed daily. Those who survived found that they were no better off than dead, as their bodies failed, organs failed, brains shut down, and worst of all, the human genome was unraveled at a rapid pace, causing cancer and infertility amongst the surviving population. The world had come to a dreadful realization. Humanity was going extinct. Nothing could cure the Unmaker Plague, its very existence baffling the most brilliant minds as those who weren't immediately killed were doomed to suffer a painful existence until their body shut down completely. Little did they know, but the Unmaker Plague was a thing feared the galaxy over, capable of wiping out entire civilizations, from Stone Age tribes to Space Age nations. A wave of existential horror washed over Earth as people came to realize that all of their history, their culture, and knowledge would be forever forgotten. They would die on their home planet, never venturing into the stars and settling exotic worlds like they had once promised their children. But humanity refused to go quietly into the long night. They fought against the looming extinction with all their might, but the creations would only prolong their lives and never save them. Out of options, it was decided that if humanity could not survive, then at least their legacy could. And so was born Project Gemini. An attempt to create a successor to humans. All of the survivors lived on borrowed time, gave themselves to a singular purpose. A final creation of the greatest wonder humans had ever and would ever make. Thousands of years of collected knowledge and technology poured into the largest project in human history. Workers died where they stood in mines and fields. Engineers coughed blood and viscera onto the blueprints, and scholars struggling to remember crucial information as their minds degraded. But everyone kept going. Each person who died only fueled the fanatical drive of the others before doom claimed them as well. And then finally, humanity had given birth to twins. One was of flesh and blood, born of the same primordial earth that humans arose from, and distant relatives. The primates were as diverse as humans were, uplifted and given the spark of sentience that Homo sapiens found so many millennia ago. Chimpanzees, apes, gorillas, and monkeys were all uplifted to equals with the human cousins, and given the historical records and cultural legacy of 10,000 generations before them. The other was of metal and code, born of the technology their makers once hoped to use to travel to the stars, and had used to sustain themselves as the unmaker plague washed through them. Humans called them androids, and gave them the gift of free will to make them as human and alive as they were in their haste. Humanity kept them looking like robotic drones instead of mirrors of their creators. To them was given the library of knowledge and information, gathered over many millions of lifetimes, so that they could remember all of humanity's creations and innovations, even if humans could no longer. The dwindling humans could foresee the primates and the androids, echoes of their own divided past, so they taught their two children about unity and cooperation, about how in their thousands of years of existence, it was only when humanity was dying that it fully come together to achieve their greatest work. Both primates and androids would live side by side and help each other in equal union. Neither considered firstborn of mankind, but both the proudest children of a dying parent. And 
when the last human finally passed, surrounded by both androids and primates, the Earth itself mourned their passing. When the two ventured into space and encountered other sentient life, they shocked the galactic community. Not only were they synthetic and inorganic life forms living together in unity, but that Earth had somehow survived the Unmaker Plague. A feat thought impossible. While the humans did indeed fall to the plague that had claimed many civilizations before it, humanity lived on through the primates and androids. Some decreed the actions of the humans as playing God, but such voices were shut down by the children of humans who simply said, Then our gods are much more real and much more benevolent than yours. Primates have no qualms about leaving their children with an android caretaker, and both feel safer around each other than with other organic or synthetic life forms, respectively. An android goes to see a primate mechanic as regularly as a primate would go see an android doctor. There are even cases of marriage between the two. Together, they have spread across dozens of worlds and systems, united in their greatest triumphs and greatest failures. They have made wondrous inventions humans could only dream of and face trials that no human dared think of. In war and peace, their union has prospered, their power and prestige rivaling that of a species who has spent centuries amongst the stars. Humans never made it to the stars, but the banner of old Earth can be found the galaxy over, emblazoned on battle standards and painted on sides of cargo containers. Humans could never give the future they promised to their children. But their children gave them the future that they hoped to grant them. With the lessons learned from the creators and uplifters, both the androids and primates carry the light of humanity into the darkest of voids, believing that somewhere, beyond the veil, humanity smiles proudly at what they have accomplished as heirs of humanity. End of story. Story number two. Morning Coffee, written by Arclight Magus. I didn't understand why humans kept such an odd schedule. Certainly, I had to read the human guide, which detailed their resting periods originating from their world, as well as a number of their rituals involving resting periods. But to simply put it, Yitz simply didn't understand. When Yitz's form required rest, Yitz simply locked into position and rested. It was only in the time translation approximation 12 Earth weeks that Yitz came to respect the human resting ritual and the morning coffee the human had brought with them. It was a day of transit like many before it. Yitz, a translation approximation senior engineer, was conducting a post-jump inspection of the engines when the alarms began to sound. Pirates... Of course it was pirates. Yitz knew of the ship's cargo, but typically gave it no thought. The ship's cargo was not Yitz's concern. That was Rutupsk's concern. Doing as Yitz's was raised to do, Yitz's paused in task and moved into a non-threatening posture. This would go as it always does. The pirates will board, hurt any being not in a non-threatening posture, take as much cargo as possible before assistance can arrive, and then leave. Much like the human taxes, Yitz believed them to be called. And it was in that moment that Yitz remembered the human, glandular member of the Diocious physiognomy by the namesake Victoria, was in her resting period, and this would be the first pirate experience for the human. But Yitz was uncertain of what to do. If Yitz left the non-threatening posture, Yitz would be liable to be hurt, or perhaps killed particularly with the predators like the pirates who commonly prowled this portion of space. Yitz's answer came soon enough. Yitz heard more than saw the pirates seeming to be running. They were making sounds of fear, as strange as a sound as Yitz could imagine. And then Yitz heard the quiet growl and the slow shuffling fleet slowly approaching Yitz. Taking a chance, Yitz adjusted Yitz's eyes, human Victoria was in front of Yitz, appearing to have been sprayed with some pirate blood in her resting ritual clothes. She 
was yawning. Seems like we got some unwelcome guests, Yitz, Victoria indicated, noting Yitz's posture. Victoria, you are not in a non-threatening posture. Query, did the pirates not hurt Victoria? Yitz managed, still puzzling over the pirate blood adorning human Victoria's resting ritual clothes. No, but they did something worse. They woke me up without coffee, Victoria stated, a predatory look filling her features. Query, will Victoria hurt Yitz before coffee now? Yitz asked, ready to return to a non-threatening posture. Nope. But you can see about making some while I get rid of these unwelcome guests. And remember, I'm a monster before I've had my coffee. Victoria grinned and shuffled off down the corridor. Yitz set about the work of making the human coffee. Yitz didn't know if the human Victoria was being facetious, but Yitz didn't want to find out. Yitz heard distant clanking, indicating the pirate ship had separated from this ship. Human Victoria would likely be returning now. Yitz found the large vial that human Victoria used to coffee and filled it. By the time Yitz turned around to look down the corridor, human Victoria was in front of Yitz, reaching for the vial. Gimme, Victoria said, her resting ritual clothes appearing to be a bit more coated in pirate blood than earlier. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, 